Hello everybody, and now I'm going to, to show you how we can use Google Earth Engine platform to produce image-based uh, classification with machine learning uh, algorithms uh, without uh, having to install any software. So in order to do so, I'm going, uh, you have to have um, a registration with a Google Earth Engine. So basically here is a website um, that you can use earthenginegoogle.com. You have to sign up here to create your own account first. And for this, you need a Gmail email address. So the procedure is very straightforward. Once you uh, subscribe in a few days, you will uh, receive an email um, saying that uh, congratulations, now you are ready to use Google Earth Engine. Well, basically, this is really a cool uh, platform and it uh, gives, I mean, uh, introducing Google Earth Engine is another topic. So, but in just in few words, it gives us an unprecedented opportunity to work with geospatial data on, uh, on the cloud. So basically, uh, we can use their platform to conduct a beautiful and quite comprehensive analysis on a planetary scale. Uh, that was uh, previous not, previously not uh, possible. Google Earth Engine is a pin pioneer in this regard. It uh, gives quite um, user-friendly um, possibilities to do so. And this user-friendly possibility called uh, Google Earth uh, Engine Explorer, the one which we are going to talk uh, right now, but there is also code editor and just I'm going to very very uh, briefly show you this code editor basically is a programming interface where you can write your um, codes your scripts and run your analysis on a cloud this is uh, very cool i'm going to give you some more examples in my uh, future videos maybe not uh, in this uh, course but if you're interested in the topic i would encourage you to uh, basically to to follow my updates but for the time being uh, let's uh, talk about uh, Google Earth Engine Explorer here uh, this platform uh, offer us also quite a nice opportunity to apply machine learning uh, algorithms using um, cloud computing facility so let's say we would like to classify area well, let's say we would like to classify, well, maybe, okay, let's, let's uh, try with New York. So you have to search for New York. Here you go. The area appear here. Once we are, uh, once we have found our study area, the second, uh, we, the second uh, basically step would be to add data that we will be using for our classification. For this you can click here add data and uh, you can uh, either type um, the data set which you um, want to use or you can also browse through the data set. Uh, there is quite a note that basically in Google Earth Engine um, yeah, Google Earth Engine uh, currently offers one of the most comprehensive archives of special data sets uh, in the world. But Explorer is a kind of its uh, small, uh, smaller, uh, uh, younger sister or daughter, uh, whatever you prefer. And the uh, data set that available in Explorer are not that um, um, not the, the list is not that full compared to the um, uh, scripting interface of Google Earth Engine. Let's uh, work with Landsat dataset, and I would like to use with Landsat uh, 30 day, 32 day collection. Basically, the best thing would be probably just to write Landsat and click and search. Then uh, there will be uh, the results display, and here you can see already there is different uh, data sets listed, which you can click, and you can basically get information what kind of uh, data set it is. Yeah, there, there is a, a comprehensive metadata for each of the data set. We are going back, 
and we will find the data set which we uh, would like to use. This is a Landsat 8 uh, collection. 32 days. Composites. Maybe I do it this way. I will just continue searching. There's a lot of data to browse through. It's very exciting and interesting and you can uh, always have so much uh, information and also learn about uh, data sets that previously you were not uh, even uh, thinking that exist, which is uh, really uh, quite cool. So I would like to use this uh, collection, which is Landsat 7 collection. Uh, so to today, uh, top of atmosphere reflectance. I'm opening in it in a, a work uh, space. Okay, we have uh, we can see the uh, the uh, lines because of the sensor failure. Maybe we can also to supplement our analysis search for Landsat 8 collection. Yeah, so for the time being, I will just click it, uh, apply save, and we'll go to again to search option. And here I will put Landsat 8. And then let's go down. This is it. So we need Landsat 8 collection. So to day composite. So today composite means that the uh, images that are acquired in the period of 32 days are um, summed up and the mean of these images um, are created. So in, in 32 days, it's two Im Landsat image uh, acquisition. So basically, it's the sum of uh, the mean of the two images. And since uh, we want to see more vegetation, we will go to, uh, let's say, July uh, of uh, uh, 2019. And here you have a different, uh, so basically here you can choose the time period you want to work with. I, I chose July uh, 2019 and here you can choose uh, the uh, visualization of your image. So by default it is a uh, true color composite, but maybe for classification purposes it would be better to have, uh, let's say, false color composite. Let's try this one this combination. Yes, I guess this is better. And uh, Landsat 7, you can save it, yes. And Landsat 7, we don't need it, we delete it, yes. And, uh, okay, uh, let's uh, move basically to classification purposes. We uh, have uh, added image data that we would like to classify and now we can uh, we should add a uh, training uh, and validation data for our classifier. For this, uh, we will click again on add data and we'll um, choose hand-drawn points and polygons for this um, purpose for our classification. In case you have your own data available for training and validation, you can uh, choose fusion tables and then you could 
um, ba basically load your table. The fusion table is a special format of the table data set that could be uh, um, used in Google Earth Engine. So, but since I don't have it, I just delete it and I again go to add data and uh, use hand, uh, this hand uh, option of hand drawn points and polygons. Once you click on it, you here have a um, um, possibility to add classes. Let's uh, add class one, which will be water. So I will rename it. I will call it water. And then uh, I will also choose a blue color for, for the water. Then I will add class uh, urban so the color is okay for urban it's red okay i will i will add class uh, vegetation let's make it more green okay and i would uh, add also class um, clouds because as you can see we have some clouds here and clouds will be like white all right so once you are done with this we can start collecting points for this we click on the first class which is water and here you have different options we can uh, draw shape file uh, so shapes this would be polygons it would um, the whole polygon that could train will be used for training of the data or we can also use a tool which is called a marker which will be just a point data yes so we can also zoom in and put some points here basically you remember more training data, more variable data, training data that uh, cover different spectral variability of your images you collect, uh, the better would be your classification. So for the demonstration purposes, I will just uh, click several uh, points for the water, but of course for your applications, you should do it more carefully. Then uh, we will uh, move to our second class, which is urban. And uh, the same procedure, I zoom in uh, to our um, image and I click here. collect some points here okay maybe maybe here as well then I will move to class vegetation and uh, since it's false color composite the best band combination would be uh, um, the, the vegetation is uh, shown in red so I just click on the areas with the red color dominating I mean I can also switch to basically to map view then it's really very easy to identify the park areas let's add here point here here yeah so it's basically it's a lot of mm -hmm. and finally my last um, class is clouds we have some clouds here in this part so we will zoom in and create some points where the clouds are i can even zoom in more the rule of thumb is that you have at least 10 uh, training points per class but uh, 30 points is even better yeah but and those uh, training points should be well distributed 
across your image. So this is a demonstration. I'm doing it not very properly, but for you to remember this for your work is very important. Okay, um, we have now our training data collected for our study area in New York. And we go to analysis, we have, we, we choose train classifier, then you see here is a really nice uh, selection of uh, machine learning algorithms. We have uh, Fastnav, Bayes, Vmax, Entropy, Vino, Perceptron, Pegasus, CART, Random Forest, Support Vector Machines, well, um, let's use a Random Forest classifier. Resolution is 30 meters is correct because we use Landsat and we click uh, train classify and display the results. Here you go. Here is our classification. We should wait a bit. It takes some time that it is loading, but our classification based on random forest is finished. As you can see, uh, the classification could have been better. And this is uh, partly because uh, I have not uh, selected uh, precisely enough um, um, class points for the class urban. But um, at the same time, um, it is quite straightforward and easy procedure that you can uh, do quite fast, which make it a very attractive option for doing classification uh, especially when um, when there is no specific uh, tools or software tools uh, at hand, but uh, the classification should be done. And also um, you can see that it could be done over very big areas because if you zoom out, you can see that your uh, classification is automatically extrapolated to the biggest, bigger area. So this make it a uh, very uh, nice and powerful tool. If you click, click here on the model results, you um, automatically also receive uh, um, accuracy assessment. Well, overall valid is 100%, which is um, over optimistic, I guess. But um, this is a result based on um, our uh, internal uh, uh, accuracy assessment procedure. But uh, again, uh, we should be uh, um, critical to the uh, selection of the training data for your classifier. This is crucial. Another interesting uh, feature here is that you can download uh, your model uh, results. So basically your classification result and you will be directed to, um, to this uh, dialog where you can uh, select different options. You can uh, either download map view based on the viewport, draw a rectangle, or draw a polygon. Here you can also have different uh, options for format of the data, um, the bands that you need, projection, as well as resolution. Default is uh, 500, but since we were using Lonsan data here, I would suggest you would put uh, 30 meters and then you can basically click download and the uh, uh, download procedure will be started. So that was it.